what's up? Uh, Faizan here from Research Beast. Um, on this channel, I share different tips and tricks for researchers, different motivational talks, and I also talk to experts about the research methods or anything related to research. So if you're interested in content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Today we have Dr. Katrina Berezina with us. Uh, Dr. Katrina, thank you, thank you, Katrina, for accepting the invitation for being with uh, me today on this channel. Um, so, Dr. Katrina Berezina is uh, an assistant professor right now um, uh, in the Department of Nutrition and Hospitality Management at the University of Mississippi. The reason why I invited uh, you, Katrina, today is because of your experience as a researcher, as an editor, and a reviewer. Uh, you're involved with GHTT for such a long time, and you know you are an integral part of it. Thank you so much, Faisal. I'm very course. excited to be here, and thank you for your invitation. It's my pleasure. Question, and this question says that um, what is the difference between synthesizing the literature and critically reviewing the literature? Okay, uh, perfect question. So I think that these two things have to go hand in hand. So the way how I would explain it is that when you are synthesizing the literature, you need to find common areas so, for example, instead of presenting your literature review as um, study one found this, this, and this, study two found this, this, and this, the synthesis, the synthesis would require you to say that study one and two found item number one, however, they disagreed about item number two, right? So, uh, that would allow you to Pre present a summary, not presenting study by study in your literature review, but instead create a body of literature, a summary of what has happened. And the way how I usually recommend to do this to my students is not to go from one study to another in describing the results, but going from concept to concept. So, for example, um, I will use some uh, concepts that are common for the hospitality research and maybe other business disciplines. So I hope that it will be useful for all other scholars out there. So let's say if we think about the concept of um, satisfaction and that is commonly used in the hospitality research, then the student would need to look at the literature. Okay, what do we know about satisfaction? What are the common aspects about all these different studies that have been conducted? What are the common results? And what are the areas that are, for example, conflicting with each other? So, but then you also need to be critical about doing that from the perspective that you not only report what has found in the literature, but you also find, add your interpretation to that. So you need to critically think about what you're seeing. And then, for example, you can say that, well, you read these different studies and you say that, okay, this area has been widely explored. We know this, this, and this. However, nobody has paid attention to, let's say, and then you present your idea. So if you find a certain lack in the area, you find a gap, then that's what would bring the critical assessment, in my perspective, to the um, process of reviewing the literature. Thank you. Hey guys, if you are think if you think you are getting some value out of this video, please do not forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would also appreciate if you can share this video within your um, within your uh, social networks or within your networks of people that may need this video. As if I'm working on a new area, how can I write the literature review? I suppose if it's a new concept that you are trying to mm -hmm. work on, how would you write the literature? Well, you know, that's a great question. And uh, I actually was in a situation like this when I was writing my dissertation. My dissertation was on uh, flash sales in the hospitality industry. So 
And flash sales are websites that allow time limited discounts for products and services such as Groupon, uh, Living Social, and other examples like this. But what I can share from my experience is that, well, first of all, I even had the challenge to find out what is this I'm researching. So I, I noticed that there are these websites such as Groupon, right? But I didn't even know what the common term for them would be. So, and that was the first process that you actually need to understand what is that that you're trying to conceptually describe, right? So, for example, you can go in different routes, such as, you know, um, let's say we called industry partners, we read professional literature, the magazines uh, about the hospitality industry that we're writing about Groupon, and we try to see, okay, what are the key features that they are describing, how they present this concept, what does it mean, how it works, you know, so then we found that, okay, uh, that's a concept of flash sales and different researchers have been calling it uh, with different terms because there was a certain evolution to the process and that started as social commerce for example and then by discovering this i found specific areas where i needed to look um, so that would also give you certain knowledge for example as you look at the evolution of the concept you can also see does the previous findings still apply to this phenomenon in the way how it exists in the world currently? So then you also start thinking broader from that. So where does it fall conceptually and what this concept represents? For example, um, following my story with hotel flash sales, the website provide deep discounts, right? So the area was absolutely new. I was dealing with just one academic paper that was published at that time but if you think about the nature of the phenomenon discounted sales are not new at all right so when you start going further and further and further from that initial idea that you started with you will probably find the literature that would help you to support the development of your research so then as i started growing further further away and thinking about that body of knowledge that already exists i went into the pricing literature i went into the consumer behavior associated with pricing to understand why would travelers purchase for example hotels through groupon or websites like this so then that will be again uh, your job as a researcher to synthesize and critically look at that literature, right? And think, do the previous findings still offer any insights into the phenomenon that I'm trying to study right now? So, and then what I would do is that I would take those aspects that are already out there and definitely include them in my study and try to build from that. So, if the concept is really different and the phenomenon is different from what has been studied before, then you may try, you may find some foundation in the literature, but you will not find the exact answers to the questions, right? So then that would allow you to build some literature review, some foundation for your research, plus you will need to take it further to actually study that specific phenomenon and that context that you want to study and offer new insights and also the answers um, for the academic literature and for the world. Right, so um, this actually, you you know, you bring a good point. I uh, got into the same problem a couple of uh, months ago. I was working with uh, my graduate student, Ramla, on her research, which is related to service suite cutting. Now, uh, service sweethearting uh, means for your personal gains when you uh, give away free stuff to your friends and family in order to get some sort of financial benefit from it, right? Something like that. Um, very interesting thing is that there's only one paper about service sweethearting, just one, like literally nothing else, right? Mm -hmm. So um, obviously she was into a trouble, like what should I write about it? Because the one paper that is about service sweethearting is a conceptual paper. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't have any literature review, like nothing much. So what do I write in my thesis when I'm writing about service sweethearting? So similar issues, right? So then um, the idea was the same. So go back and see what is service sweethearting. It's an unethical behavior. So how about you read some literature related to unethical behavior? Why do people engage in unethical behavior? 
which actually requires you to not only focus on the topic of what under consideration, but you know, related topics, but also into some other disciplines because in hospitality, maybe we don't have a lot of literature about unethical behavior, but maybe in psychology, you have a lot of literature related to unethical behavior. So going into some other disciplines, finding related theories to the concept that you are studying would also be something that can help uh, while you are working on something. So yeah, it's a new area and whatever. Thank you very yes. much, Katrina. Uh, yes. Best of luck for your job, for your research. And I hope that everybody stays safe and we will go through this COVID-19 together. Thank you for having me, Faisal.